I represent. So are you a Raiders fan? Niners. Niners. Yeah. Just once uh once the Rams left or whatever Raiders left. Yeah. Switch to the Niners, luckily. So you grew up like when you first Yeah, my, my dad was a Rams fan, so I grew up going to those games, so it was pretty brutal. <laughs> Lakers, yeah. It's all LA teams except for the Niners, pretty much. All right. So, hello, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. My name is Chris Thomas. I'm the digital media manager for the New York Cosmos. And today we're lucky to have uh, our starting goalkeeper, Kyle Rainish, joining us. A uh, uh, little bit of information about Kyle. Kyle joined the Cosmos from Real Salt Lake, uh, where he had been since 2007. He grew up in California, had a standout career at the at UCSB, where he won a national championship. Uh, style, Kyle started all three of our regular season games so far in the NASL, and he's joining us live from the our training complex at Mitchell Field. Kyle, thanks for joining us. How's it going? Good. How are you doing? I'm doing very well. Uh, Kyle, you've been in New York for a few months now. Uh, how has the move to New York gone? How are you uh, enjoying living here? Yeah, it's been great so far. Very impressed. Uh, make it into the city a little bit here and there, and uh, you know, it's New York. Obviously, has a very special energy and special dynamic to it. So I've really been enjoying everything out here so far. Um, have you've uh, have you had a chance to see New York City at all? Have you, have you seen any sights or? Yeah, a little bit. My mom was in here a couple weeks ago, so I was uh, able to check out the Rockefeller Center and some uh, you know cliche uh, touristy things like that. Um, <laughs> Still hoping to uh, catch up and do a lot more, but I uh, made it to a Yankees Dodger game, which I was really excited about, and uh, you know, some things like that. So it's been it's been great. Very nice. Did you wear your Dodgers hat to the? I uh, did. To did. I, I took some heat from the Yankee fans, but uh, it was it was well worth it to get to uh, see such a marquee matchup at uh, Yankee Stadium. <laughs> well, cool. Um, so to kind of dive right in. Uh, What's been the dynamic amongst the uh, keepers here at the Cosmos between you, Jimmy Maurer, and Chad Calderon? Are you guys pushing each other? Is it competitive? Is it a good group? Yeah, yeah. I think uh, I think it's been really good so far. I mean, uh, both Jimmy and Chad are very good goalies. Uh, so I think every day, you know, everybody's going as hard as they can to make the push that, uh, you know, they should be starting and it's their spot. So I think that keeps everybody on their toes and, you know, I think helps everybody improve the fastest. Um, you've been, in the past, these three games, a pretty aggressive keeper, like in claim the ball and, and taking command of your box. Is that how you are in general as a keeper? Has that been a, a strategy you guys have been employing these first three games? Uh, probably a combination of both. Um, I think Joe pushes some things, playing out of the back and stuff that I always hadn't been very comfortable with doing, but it's something we've worked on a lot. Um, so definitely a lot more comfortable now playing some stuff out to the center backs and putting them in some tougher positions to play out of. But um, yeah, that's I feel like I've always pretty much played that way as far as coming out for balls, uh, you know, defensively and shot stopping and things like that. So uh, to that point, uh, what are you? What is the team going to learn from the recent match against the Carolina Railhawks? Have you guys had a chance to regroup and, and take some lessons from it? Yeah, yeah, you know, I think, uh, not that we were overconfident, but I think we, uh, you know, we've gotten some good results our first couple of games, and I think it was good to, you know, a humbling loss like that is good to make sure that nobody thinks, uh, you know, we're too good and that we can just show up to games. So I think it was a good, uh, hopefully a good reality check for the for the team and that uh, you can't just show up and, you know, some casual things that we got penalized for that, uh, you know, you can't be doing that week in, week out, so hopefully we're uh, sorting them out this week and be ready this weekend. Uh, I mean, you guys have been on the road the last couple of weeks. Are you guys excited to uh, play in front of your home fans again? Yes, absolutely. Um, it was kind of a tough to get that taste and then leave for the last couple of weeks uh, after that atmosphere and everything was so great that first week. So uh, I think everybody's uh, very relieved to, to be back home and you know get again back and on our stadium in front of our uh, home fans. 
Cool. This leads me nicely into our uh, first question from Cosmos fans. Uh, David Fernandez on Twitter asks, uh, at our home opener on August 3rd, could you hear the chants coming from the supporters right behind your goal? Yeah, yeah, I could. Um, it was pretty amazing hearing uh, for the first game to hear how organized the chants were and how lo lo loud the uh, supporters section and stuff was. It was uh, pretty great. So, you know, we, we love having the fans there. And, uh, you know, to get a sellout and stuff like that, I think it motivates all the players even more to when you have chants like that. And, you know, I, I think it definitely provides a lot of inspiration for us. Were you, are you able to pick out any of the specific chants, or is it just kind of a wonderful uh, sound that, that motivates you? Not right now, but definitely in the game. I, you know, they're familiar, familiar chants that you've you know, heard in other countries, you know, with different... Uh, you know, a lot of them seem to be similar from team to team with just different, uh, you know, different whoever your team is and stuff like that. So I definitely recognize some of them, and it was uh, amazing to hear them. Uh, like I said, just so organized and so loud for, their, for our first real game. That was pretty great. Uh, David also asks, has, what's been the most surprising part of this season? Have any big surprises come up in the North American Soccer League? Um, I'm sorry, you cut out there. Can you repeat it one more time? What's been the biggest surprise so far in the uh, this NASL season uh, compared to what maybe what you guys were expecting? Um, biggest surprise. Uh, kind of just I, I'm impressed with the fan turnout. Uh, you know, I wasn't sure with some of the other. I knew New York would have very good followers, but wasn't sure in the other cities. And uh, you know, we went down to Florida. I was very impressed with how you know, even though it's an older baseball stadium, those fans were really loud down there and definitely created an energy and an atmosphere. And then even with the rain in Carolina, you know, they were still very vocal. So, you know, I think it's great that everywhere you show up, you know, there's going to be a group of, you know, fans to play in front of. And uh, I was pleasantly surprised to see that. All right. Jen Lee on Google Plus asks, what is one of the biggest misconceptions people think about goalkeepers? Um, misconceptions. Uh, you know, maybe sometimes that every time it's a goal, it's our fault. Um, you know, a lot of other things sometimes have to break down in front of us for the ball all the way to, to get all the way back there. Um, but at the same time, you never want to, you take responsibility for every goal that goes in. So, uh, Sometimes things like that or some things that are a lot more difficult than maybe we make them look. Uh, some saves that are right at us, the ball could be knuckling and you might not be able to see. So if you don't catch it cleanly or it doesn't go perfectly, you know, I think uh, it might be easy to misconceive how easy some of the saves are and some of the plays are uh, when you're in the stands. <laughs> Very nice. Uh... Zach Muniz on Twitter asks, what do you think is the biggest difference between playing in the NASL compared to the other leagues that you've played in? Um, for me, you know, maybe just the soccer-specific stadiums. Uh, Carolina had, had a good one, but it was a little bit difficult playing down in Florida on an older, you know, baseball field. There were some issues with uh, the ground and the infield and stuff like that, so... I, I've only been to a few so far, so I'm kind of looking forward to seeing more and kind of getting a better idea for, of what it's like. But um, it, at least in the MLS, by the time I finished, most teams that had complete soccer specific specific stadiums, so which I think will happen in due time with the NASL. So just uh, probably have a little bit of patience with that. Okay. Uh, this is a, a two part question. I don't know if these two. Parts of the questions are related. Maybe you can uh, shed some light. <laughs> Patrick Inferna uh, on Twitter asks, "What is the most valuable thing that you learned from Nick Romano? Pardon me, Nick Romando. And can you describe your dream burrito?" <laughs> uh, probably the most valuable thing I learned from Nick is he just had, uh, you know, two things he was very good at. Or I was when I came out of college, I was very impressed with were his hands. Um, you know, he drop nearly nothing that was in and around him, and then his distribution was incredible. So just his technique that you saw in a lot of things like that, you know, you're always trying to emulate, uh, and he's obviously a U.S. national team boy, so you're trying to emulate the best of the best, uh, which, you know, he is in our country. So for me, those are probably the two things that I was able to pick up the most from him. Uh, and then is my favorite burrito um, in Santa Barbara. They made one called the California burrito that was, steak, 
uh, guacamole, sour cream, and French fries. Uh, and yeah, it was pretty amazing. But definitely had to cut those out of the diet once uh, once I left college. So uh, once, maybe <laughs> once I'm done playing, I can uh, enjoy some of those again. Yeah, the California burrito with the French fries. We were talking about that earlier. It's, uh, <laughs> it's a Southern California specialty. It's the best. Um, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, so Dane Murphy, I don't know if you're familiar with him. Um, he on yeah. Twitter asks, "What is more prolific, my anger issues or Chad Calderon's idiosyncrasies?" Uh, definitely Dane's uh, Irish anger issues are the most <laughs> the most entertaining I've seen. Uh, it doesn't take a lot for that guy to see red, and it's uh, always always entertaining once you see that flip that switch get flipped on him. Uh, <laughs> seeing who he's going to go after next. So, yeah, definitely enjoyed having him on the team so far this year. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, sorry, let me get this name. John Frusciante. I don't think it's that John Frusciante. But um, he asks on Google+, uh, what do you like most about the NASL um, compared to USL Pro, which I believe you have some experience with, and, and MLS? Um, I mean, for me personally, when I was with USL Pro, when I was on loan with Charleston, it was good, similar to this, where I was playing a lot, which I enjoyed. I didn't get a lot of time to play behind Nick at Salt Lake. Um, but what was brutal about that is we took buses everywhere, so you had these, like, 10, 12, 14-hour bus rides with a day or two in between games where I just didn't feel like I could play a game Friday night, take a 10-hour bus ride, and then be ready for a game Sunday or something like that. So... I like so far how professional the NASL has been with one game a week and the flights have been organized and the travel has been, you know, a lot more professional than it was then when I was with Charleston. But I was only with Charleston for a month and all the games were local on the East Coast, so I don't know if it, that was just that experience. But so far, that's what I've appreciated so far. Okay. Um, and I'll actually have a, a, a few last questions. Um, how is the Cosmos defensive unit coming along? Um, are you starting from a chemistry and having begun training with Reversi, are you excited to, to have him be part of that crew? Yeah, yeah. You know, obviously I don't know what the final lineup is going to be for the weekend, but, um, you know, we, we have a lot of capable, capable guys back there. We had a couple of mishaps in the last game, but hopefully we got those out of our system. Um, you know, Reversi has a ton of potential. Uh, but at the same time, uh, in our first two games, the, the backboard did a great job. We only gave up, uh, you know, the one goal and stuff. So um, whoever's back there, we know that out of, you know, our guys, they're all capable of stepping in and doing a good job and helping us uh, get the result we need. So, uh, yeah, we have, a, we have a lot of potential back there. Okay. Um, I think that's all the questions we have. Kyle, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, Absolutely. Cosmos fans, you can see Kyle uh, play on Saturday uh, at 7 p.m. when uh, we're taking on the San Antonio Scorpions. Uh, tickets are still available at nycosmos.com slash tickets. And as a reminder, the first 7,500 fans in attendance receive a very cool uh, Cosmos Country t-shirt. Kyle, thanks again. See you of Saturday. Of course. Thank you very much for having me. All right. Bye-bye.